Hello lovely people. Hi. And welcome to another episode of Ask Your Lesbian Mothers. Are you laughing because you're never ready when I talk? Yeah, no, my high was just like really extra. <laughs> Oh, was it very, okay. It was very high. <laughs> Claudia in intros, it's a work in progress. But you know, actually, I'll have you know, people loved my little like educational segment in our recent uh, Malaysia video. I'm not saying people don't love your segment. <laughs> I'm just saying your intros. I have interesting factual things to say too. <laughs> I know, darling. <laughs> so in these episodes, we love to answer your questions that you have submitted to us on Instagram, at Jessie and Claude, which is our joint Instagram. We do have our own. Mine's Jessica out of the closet, and yours is Cloud Foz. Cloud Foz, we're working on it. We're, we're seeking, I'm trying to get it changed, the name. It was like a name a long time ago. Basically, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, does it? Well, my nickname at school was Cloud because everyone called me Claudia and- but That's not her name. It's my name, as in like all the teachers would say Claudia and I was like, no, it's Claudia. So then my school friends called me Cloud and they spelled it Cloud, like how you spell it Cloud, it like up in the sky. That just became my nickname for about the next 10 years during like my high school years. And Foz is obviously the first part of my maiden name. Also, not how you pronounce it though. No, it is actually Fozard. So it's like Cloud Foz, which is totally just not my name. And now <laughs> I go by it publicly and I'm like, I don't really like that. <laughs> oh. So to bring that back around, our joint Instagram, at Jessie and Claude, is where today's questions were submitted. And we answer your questions as the proud mums that we are. It's mum advice. Or mum advice. If you're American. Mum. Mom. Well, it depends whereabouts in America. I don't think they will say mum. Some might no. say ma'am. Mom. No, I think that's how Americans <laughs> say mum. <laughs> I like the British. Let us know in the comments what you call your mother. No, no. No. Your country's word for mother. I don't mean what you call your mother. That might end very badly. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. It's not, we're not actually real mums. We are real mums. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're not your real mums. We have a genuine child. Yeah, I bet. We are actual parents to like, a child. Him in my tummy and birthed him and you like, you were there at his conception and everything. What is your favorite ice cream flavor? I don't know why you said that with such enthusiasm. <laughs> what is your favorite ice cream flavor? What's yours? Um, I really like stem ginger. I know it's really specific, but if I'm at the theater, <laughs> can I just sum you for that one? Like, I, if I'm at the theater and that they have like- That is a really like, theater specific And they have like a though. stem ginger ice cream with like clotted, made with clotted kind of cream milk. Oh, so good. I think I'm thinking of a very specific <laughs> ice cream right now. <laughs> okay, so one brand. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta like, you know, supporting local, <laughs> you support the small business. Yeah. That's very good. like local cows. Okay, mine is... Let me guess. Strawberry. Why? I know you don't like chocolate. No. I know you're not like, you wouldn't really go for vanilla. Like, you like vanilla, oh. but like, if they had a range of options. I mean, oh, yeah, that's true. So um, You don't often I don't... come across sugar-free strawberry ice cream, and if they do, you're like, woo! Yeah, so, so my body can't really handle sugar, so I don't eat sugar. But the non-sugar version is generally always vanilla. So I'm like vanilla or chocolate. It is. Oh yeah, or chocolate, or in coconut. which case I just don't have anything. Or coconut. Because it's made of coconut milk, which is quite nice. Yeah, so coconut. Coconut is generally quite so nice. So what is your favourite? Well, it's supposed to be a quick fire one. Oh no, it's a quick fire question! <laughs> oh. We're going to answer if, anything quickly. If it could be any flavour in the world at all, pistachio is quite nice. Oh. Nutty and ginger. Mm. You had a pistachio sugar-free ice cream once when we were in Italy. I did. Yeah, Italy is so I think it was in Rome, good wasn't it? for allergies. Like people don't tell you that, but traveling when you're traveling, you don't think of Italy as a place that's really great for food allergies, but it actually is really amazing. They have a really high rate of celiacs. I mean, that's just one type of allergy. But I yes, I don't know why that relates to also being good for sugar-free things, but they are really <laughs> good for sugar-free things. So next quick fire it has to be quick. <laughs> <laughs> if you got married again, would Ruby the flower pile? Yeah, unless Did we get divorced <laughs> yeah. and then be married. <laughs> or... Yeah, that's right. Or if we're not, or were we not ever married, and then we decided to get married. Oh yeah, we have friends who did that. If we were going to get married like this year, next year, then yeah. But who knows? If we were going to get redo our vows in like five, ten years. Yeah. Maybe we'll have like ten our, children. Yeah, exactly. Our, maybe our like youngest one, who's not yet here, will do it. That's I nice. think being a flower boy is like really cute around like at under the age of eight. He would still be under the age of eight <laughs> in five years' time. Okay. Um, he would love that though. Getting to dance down the aisle, throwing petals around. His dream. That's not normally what they do, but. Okay. Oh, is it not? Do they dance down the aisle, throwing petals? No, they just like they carry the cushion with the rings on it. No, that's a ring bearer. The question was, would he be the flower pal? Oh yeah. So. Yes, he would dance down the aisle throwing paddles around. <laughs> Turns out I know more about weddings. 
Yes. All right, well, moms, can you tell me, you know I'm trying my best and you're so proud of me for it. I'm on it. Right. Hello, darling. It's Mama. I just want to let you know that I can see how hard you've been trying recently. I know that things have been a little bit tough, but you have been trying your absolute hardest. And I can really, really say that I am so proud of all of the hard work that you put into everything you do, all of the effort, all of that energy, everything that you put your heart and soul into. And I know that it can take so much out of you, but you're doing it so well. So much of this world can be focused on what the outcomes are, on what our product is, on how productive we can be. But I think that sometimes we should be proud of just the hard work that we put into our things and the effort that we've put forth into the world. But I want you to know that when I see the effort, the energy and the love that you put into everything, I couldn't be prouder. Sorry, I was like vibrating earlier on when we were on that like call. And then I was like, what? This is, so but I didn't notice until the vibration stopped. And I suddenly realized my whole body had been vibrating. Oh. And I was like, that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what did I take this morning? We are so normal. Were you scared about something going wrong medically so far away from home? No, because we had travel insurance. Yeah, oh, what's that written here? Oh. Oh, it says we're in the ad section of the video. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? I have to say the number one most important thing that I need to have when it comes to travel is... Drum roll. Travel insurance. <laughs> yeah, Sorry. Okay, you took my drum roll. I'm someone who has a health condition and a disability, so I find it really important. And who do we use for travel insurance every time? Compare the market. You're good at this. <laughs> <laughs> I love, personally, that the website takes into account my health before showing me prices. As a person with a chronic illness and disability, I like to have peace of mind that I've taken out the right travel insurance for me, which could help to protect me should anything ever happen. So I know it's personalized to me and I know what rates I'm gonna get and I can compare them. Compare the market. It's in the word. The name. The name. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, compare the market. Not only good for travel insurance. We use them for life insurance, yeah. pet insurance. Uh -huh. Plus, perfectly healthy, non-disabled people go on holiday and book travel insurance for a range of reasons, right? Mm-hmm. What if I lose my bag? We went on holiday last year and then they lost our buggy. We yeah. were on a plane and they lost our buggy. Have a look at the link below and let us know when did travel insurance get you out of a sticky situation? I want to know what's the weirdest thing you've claimed for or attempted a claim for. Yes. <laughs> Right. How have you prioritised time together as a couple after years of marriage and being parents? We've recently we, um, decided to go to bed as soon as Rupert goes to bed, <laughs> which is actually really nice because like, we used to like, we just got into this bad habit of like, put him down and we'd like... <sighs> I think the thing is that we, we've always tried to prioritise time together, but in, in the way that we had it before we had him or the way that we had it when we had him when he was younger. So we always really loved spending time together on the sofa in the evenings. Mm -hmm. And like, I'd rub your feet, we'd watch mm -hmm. a TV show, we'd watch a movie. But we would have previously started that much earlier yeah, yeah. in the day because we didn't have him. Or when or, he was a baby, he was just there with us, he sometimes was asleep. Like, Asleep and then when he was like basket. older, he'd go to bed earlier. But then he started going to bed later, and then our, our like our time was like getting later. And anyway, then but my point was like I think even then it wasn't like really like that connecting because we we're just so tired, and then we're yeah. also just in front of a TV. So now we don't watch the TV. No. And like we, this is just this year that we've started doing this. I think going to Malaysia helped because there was like no, we don't watch TV and stuff. We're on holiday and things. We had three weeks of like basically like a TV Netflix like any kind of passive entertainment like detox and um and now we just kind of like go to bed chat yeah go to sleep earlier also, we've always we're so, we're so bonding we're just sleeping <laughs> we go to sleep. we've always done this thing where we we get into bed together and we talk for ages like we'll just lie next to it and we'll talk about the day mm -hmm. and rehash everything or just randomly chat about sometimes it's like the only chance we've really Sweetly. had to talk which Useless. is a bit like 
a little bit like annoying because then if I'm like start talking about anything work related just because like don't talk don't about talk about that I'm trying to go to sleep but yeah we do definitely need to work on and going sleep. out for dates more yeah um, now that Rupert's older we feel more confident with like getting like childcare in the evenings like we didn't really ever really want to do that with someone we didn't know so we just relied on my sister and my dad um, and you know they both have their own like lives lives and commitments and children um and so now i think we're feeling a bit more like now that rupert can advocate for himself a bit more and he's like very verbal and very physical physically able like we feel more confident in yeah like we... potentially getting a babysitter and then we go out for dinner i mean i'm just saying i feel fine about it i mean we've also we've we always have had a very specific style of parenting with rupert that gives rupert a lot more autonomy and respect and so it's difficult to bring in another adult unless we know that they also follow that. Unless, like I say, now we've got to a point with Rupert where we know that it's just not gonna fly. And previously, if we did have someone else treat Rupert in a way that he was not accustomed to, the fallout for us just mm. wasn't worth it. Yeah. It would be like, oh, we'd get to go out for an evening while someone else looked after him. Yeah, yeah. But then he was like, we get five nights of yeah, he bad used to be sleep, really difficult evenings because he's like, someone touched me and I didn't. He was like really, yeah, he's really into his routines and his like, which some people could argue is because we don't we haven't introduced him to other things, but I think it is just personally him. And as he's got older now, he's way more it's adaptable. Just, it's way, is he? Oh, he's way more adaptable. Yes, yeah, says the boy who's like, no, I will say good morning to you. He has Don't to say good morning. He has to say good morning to Claudia first and then to me. And it can't be the other way around. And if it's the other way around, the, also, the whole morning gets thrown out. Also, like, it's quite funny, like, if I go down in the morning to make myself a cup of tea, he his preferred option is that he wakes up and then hears me down there, runs down and says, good morning, mummy, gives me a cuddle and helps make my tea and gets his beaker of milk and helps and get Jessica's Diet Coke. That's like, oh, all our, that's all of our, like, go-tos in the morning. <laughs> and then we go up and that's his preferred thing and then we say good morning. But sometimes he doesn't wake up because obviously he's still sleeping and I'm not going to just hang around downstairs waiting for him, even though sometimes I'm like, maybe I should do that. But no, and then I and then I go upstairs, and then he wakes up, and then he's like, "Mummy's not downstairs," and he comes upstairs, and he's already in a bad mood because I've upset the routine. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm like, this morning I was like tiptoeing around in the kitchen because I was like, <laughs> you didn't want to wake him up. I was like, I don't want to wake him up because I kind of want to sit back in bed with my tea for a bit, and I don't. Want to... <laughs> anyway, yeah, maybe not that adaptable yet. <laughs> <laughs> but he is more verbal, so he can just tell people not to do things and he can put his own clothes on so no but like it's, you know it's on him but it's yeah fine. the question is like how do you keep your relationship alive and spend time with each other we make fun of our child he doesn't let us hold hands or kiss or cut <laughs> what are we gonna do <laughs> if i show jessica any kind of like if we like we're just like, like he's like mommy don't hold mama's hand well, it's good to show love and affection. And then he has to come up and be like... He does sometimes give us, like, all cuddles. One thing he does, which is really nice, is we all hold hands around the dinner table and then he goes, family. Which he has done sometimes when we've had guests. And then he holds everyone's hands and he's like... <laughs> <We're not>. Yeah. <laughs> I think some people who come around who aren't used to it are like, oh, are they... Are they religious? <laughs> are they going to just say some grace? <laughs> like, yeah. It's this version of grace, I suppose. Yeah, it's grace yeah. for like thankfulness for all of us together. Yeah. That's Don't the only worry. time we're permitted Don't to worry about it. She was, she was kidding. Our relationship has not been ruined by having a child. Obviously, or else we wouldn't be trying to have another one. <laughs> all right. My girlfriend and I are traveling to Malaysia soon Ooh. with another lesbian couple. Any tips? Uh, well, first of all, We've just come back from Malaysia and we have our whole travel series about it. You can watch it by clicking the card up here or the link down in the description. Yeah. Plug, plug. I'm um, guessing those people who wrote that question. Yeah, I mean, they probably already know. <laughs> yeah. um, tips, as in like where to go, what to do, wow. how to be. I, I think it's probably a, a gay question. Okay, more like. Although I don't know for sure. It just says top tips. But it does say with another lesbian couple. So. Eat charcoal towel. Eat charcoal towel. Have Penang laksa. Absolutely. Go to Penang. Go to Georgetown. Ooh, yes. Uh, go to Malacca if you like kind of history. Lankawi. Yeah, Lankawi's good. It depends though on like the time of year you're going. Cause if you, like, and the type of thing you like to do. Like, are you a beachy person? A town person, do you like your history? Are and you if you're going history? to like 
Sabah, Sarawak or Borneo then we can't really help you because we've never been there. We've only been to the peninsula. Yes. Also, make sure you're researching ahead of time quite well into things like the local culture. I'm trying to think of what on earth you would Google. Like, what would your Google terms be? How does one Google specifically which place is slightly more okay with the gay and which place really isn't? I think if you just like find, if you can find some stuff about like, um, like tourism board kind of um, web pages where they talk about popular like destinations, like if, if they're like, this is a quiet, like traditional, like words like traditional, oh. seaside, not very touristy place, then that might be not so. You dress codes. Um, <laughs> no, 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 dress. Um, if you think about uh, in terms of like if you're given the advice to dress a little bit more uh, modestly or conservatively in certain areas then that area is obviously going to probably be more the type of place that you would not walk down the street holding hands with your girlfriend. You know you might go and visit the tourist spots but mm. maintain a little distance to each other. To be honest, I think as like four women traveling together, you'll be like quite safe and have fun and... Yeah, generally you'll be read as a group of friends. I think ages gem also play into these kinds of things. That's true. If you're... You might get hit on. They might People might think, oh, a group of girls on holiday. But you'll be hit on by tourists more than hit on by locals. That's a thing. Oh, that's a thing. Oh, I just realized that. You know, all the places that we have been on holiday together, oh, yeah. I have never been hit on in by Malaysia. like local Malaysian yeah. people in Where Malaysia. Was it that That's we... so nice. We did, but we, but when we went to Penang and we stayed on the beach, there were quite a few people there who were being annoying because I was using my camera and taking photos yeah. of you. And they were like, oh, I'll take a photo of both of you and like blah, 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 and like undermining like my photography and trying to like flirt with us. Which I don't really know about. Yeah, I, I mean, they were taking their own photos though, so I think they weren't locals. No, they weren't the locals, no. No. <laughs> oh, how do I deal with a messy partner as a clean freak? Well, exactly. I'd like to know the answer to this too. <laughs> I, wouldn't say, I don't know what you're talking about. I wouldn't say I'm not like a clean freak. Because, <laughs> like, I'm not. But I'm like a tidy. <laughs> messy. Like, I like to. <sighs> I like to put my clothes away and at the end of the day and I like to like if you looked inside my wardrobe it is a bit of a mess but at least I can shut the doors Jessica like inside you can her shut wardrobes the drawers. your you can wardrobes shut the doors of my your wardrobe. wardrobes are actually tidy your wa my wardrobes are beautiful they're kind of that's because all her clothes are out on the floor they're clean <laughs> no okay right Hold on. So it we've got to settle this debate. Wait, wait, to be honest, no, let's no, listen. No, no. My <laughs> thing makes sense. My things make sense. Right. If I was you gonna wear say something, you justify. If you wear something, okay, then I don't think it is clean enough to go back in the cupboard because it's not 100% clean, okay? I've worn this top now. It's touched my body. It's touched my skin. It's not clean. It can't go back in the cupboard. But if not like super, super dirty, if it's not got food on it, it's not had a spill, it doesn't smell or whatever. So I can't put I it back in the cupboard. It, I'm not going to wash it yet because it's not dirty and I'm not going to yeah, waste the fine. world's resources. That's fine. So therefore, but... it just goes on the clothes yeah, 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 yeah. It's waiting. Like, the, I'm being so green I'm gonna... <laughs> But I'm gonna wear it again. Yeah, that's it just makes sense. Yes, you've used this argument. I don't want to put it in the cupboard and it's going to smell you've used your clothes to go back in the cupboard <laughs> and then are you actually gonna wear that again the next day? Not necessarily. So how long does it sit there? Let just me have my words. chewing and it's juices. She has used this argument many times and it would be completely yes. validated if it was just one outfit that she was then gonna wear the next day. But what happens is she puts that outfit out on the clothes horse or on the floor or on the chair and then she gets another outfit out and she wears that one and then she can't put that one back in because apparently that's now been tarnished by her skin. And then she like puts that on the clothes source or the chair or the floor. And then the next day she gets another outfit out. And I'm like, are you still wearing this? And she's like, I don't know. <laughs> and I'm like, so I then have to go around sniffing the armpits of these things to decide whether or not they qualify going back into the cupboard or back in, or into the wash. So it really is my real pet peeve, to be honest. She doesn't want another thing that's annoying. She never, like, when she finishes a bottle of Diet Coke, she I never... don't know that you've actually answered this person's question. 
Because <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> moaned I just, about me. I said, I also want to know the answer. <laughs> how do you deal with it? I don't. I have to just... No, with this, a lot of love. This is how I deal with it. I just, like, take a deep breath and I do a quick sweep around the house. And uh, if it gets too much, I just leave the house. And I go for a walk with Tilly. Okay. And you remember all the great qualities of that person. I mean, I think you could just be tied, yeah, it's not that hard. The things you like about them. <laughs> oh. So thank you so much for watching this episode of Ask Your Lesbian Mothers. Would you like to see them themed on more specific topics? Like school life and dating life. How do I come out to my parents? How do I come out to my friends? That type of thing. Or do you prefer just more of a free-flowing thing where, where each month you can submit some questions and scenarios? What do I do in this? Um, hey, mom, give me advice for this. And we can answer your questions. Click the link down in my description to find out more about Compare the Market. Definitely highly, highly recommend for travel insurance. Every click helps. So thank you for that. And thank you for watching all the way to the end of the video. You're very sweet. I shall see you in my next video.